The katana is known globally as a symbol of Japanese history and as an emblem of Bushido, the samurai way. Today, swords are also recognized as works of art. The katana we are familiar with today has gone through various stages of evolution from the ancient swords. The evolution of the sword has been influenced by many historical events. In this video, we will explore the history of the sword from its appearance in ancient Japan through its evolution to the katana and its journey through the Sengoku period to the present day. The history of the katana dates back to the Yayoi period. During the Yayoi period, swords were introduced to Japan by immigrants from the Chinese mainland. This was the first sword to appear in Japan. Swords were first introduced to Japan between the 3rd century BC and the mid 3rd century AD, but the sword first appeared in the world around 3000 BC and in Europe around 2000 BC, which means that swords came to Japan relatively late. In the Kofun period, ironworking and steelmaking technologies were introduced and swordsmithing began in Japan. Most people might picture the katana as a single-edged blade with a curvature carried by samurai. In fact, the initial design was a chokuto, a straight sword with no curvature, and it had a double-edged blade, not a single-edged one as we see today. With the establishment of the ancient dynasties, armaments in Japan also developed, but since the main weapons of the Kofun period were spears, halberds, and bows and arrows, most of the swords produced were used for rituals or as grave goods in burial mounds, serving the purpose of ritual implements. When used as armaments, they were for striking or stabbing. These swords, at this point, were not yet called katana. Swords from before the establishment of the katana are referred to as jokoto. Among them, the kusanagi no tsurugi is one of the most famous. This sword is one of the most famous in Japan, a legendary divine sword in Japanese mythology and one of the three sacred treasures inherited by the emperor from ancient times. Currently, this sword is housed in Atsuta Shrine. Although the Jokoto had a strong significance as ritual implements, as the scale of battles increased during the Asuka period, robustness was required for swords as well. From this need arose the Shinogi Zukuri, with ridge lines on the sword body, which allowed the pattern of the blade to be beautifully displayed, and they began to feature characteristics closer to the modern Japanese sword. The type of katana that modern people are familiar with first appeared toward the end of the Heian period. At that time, the samurai emerged as a powerful force in Japan which had previously been centered around the imperial court. Along with the rise of the samurai, the frequency of wars in Japan increased. This led to the large-scale battles known as the earlier Nine Years' War, 1051, and the later Three Years' War, 1083, in Tohoku region. The appearance of the katana is believed to be largely due to the need for a massive amount of weapons for these two wars. For the samurai, whose primary mode of battle was on horseback, the straight sword was very cumbersome to use. They required a sword with a curve, which would be easier to draw while on horseback and also allow for fluid defensive movements. This led to the emergence of the tachi, a curved sword that marked the beginning of the katana. The curve of the tachi made it easy to draw while riding a horse, and the blade was designed to taper from the base to its tip, making it easier to thrust and withdraw. As the scale of battles increased, the demand for katana grew, leading swordsmiths to establish workshops in regions suitable for making katanas, and distinctive regional styles began to emerge. Katana made from the Heian to the Azuki Momoya periods are classified as koto. The oldest existing katana is believed to be Kogarusumaru, crafted by the legendary swordsmith Amakuni. This famed blade was bestowed upon the Taira clan by the emperor and is now privately owned by the imperial family, with the National Institutes for Cultural Heritage preserving it. 
Today, the Agency for Cultural Affairs sets the criteria for what is recognized as a katana. It must be made according to traditional Japanese methods, and the material must be what is called tamahagane. The Golden Age of the Katana spanned from the Kamakura period to the Nambokucho period. The rise to power of the warrior class during the Kamakura period spurred further development of the katana, and the establishment of the Goban Kaji system under the cloistered government of Emperor Gotoba encouraged the creation of swords. This led to the emergence of renowned swordsmith schools, such as the Awataguchi School in Yamashiro Province and the Fukuoka Ichimonji School in Bizen Province. In contrast to the slender and elegant swords of the Heian period, the katanas of the Kamakura period were more practical in appearance, reflecting the robust and no-nonsense spirit of the Kamakura samurai. These katanas were wider and sturdier. The latter part of the Kamakura period witnessed the Mongol invasions of Japan, known as the Genko, in 1274, and again in 1281, the Mongol Empire launched massive invasions, first with 30,000 troops, and then with a formidable force of 100,000. Japan managed to repel the Mongol forces, but the invasions exposed weaknesses in Japanese tactics and the katanas. The Mongol preference for infantry group combat forced Japan, which had favored individual mounted combat, to adapt. This led to the development of longer weapons for more effective group combat engagement. As a result, the Odachi, with blade lengths ranging from 35 inches to 59 inches, were created. Furthermore, the rise of the Basara aesthetic, which favored flamboyance and a meritocratic ethos, made longer and more extravagant katanas popular. This period, thanks to the active support for sword-making by Emperor Gotoba, through the Gobankaji system, became known as the Golden Age of the Katana. As of the 21st century, over 100 Japanese swords have been designated as national treasures, with 80% of them being katanas from the Kamakura period. The katana continued to evolve with the demands of the times. During the Muromachi period, as mounted combat declined and group battles on foot became prevalent, the uchikatana, easier to handle than the longer tachi, appeared. The uchikatana was designed for quick strikes, featuring a blade about 23.6 inches long with a shallow curvature. Toward the end of the Muromachi period, the so-called Onin War, which is said to have led to the decline of the Muromachi Shogunate, erupted. This conflict, lasting 11 years, set the stage for the Sengoku period. The spread of strife throughout the country increased the participation of peasants in battles. To meet this demand, mass-produced katana known as Kazuuchimono emerged. Many of these were of poor quality, lacking artistic value. Thus, the katana spread not only among samurai, but also to commoners like peasants. Many peasants participated in the wars, but among them were those who could not afford armor or katanas. Therefore, some peasants would loot equipment from the bodies of fallen enemies or engage in plundering on the battlefield. As a result, the arming of peasants and the deterioration of public order in towns progressed. During the Azuchi Momoyama period, figures like Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi rose to prominence, ushering in the full-scale Sengoku period. In the Battle of Nagashino, firearms were used, and Oda Nobunaga defeated Takeda Shingen, known for having the strongest cavalry. Though firearms became the main weapon of this era, the katana remained essential on the battlefield. After the death of Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi soon achieved national unification. To curb the worsening public order due to armed peasants, Hideyoshi implemented the Sword Hunt Edict, 
confiscating all weapons, including swords, bows, spears, and firearms from peasants and merchants, and prohibiting anyone but samurai from carrying katanas. Thus, the katana gained value as something only samurai could possess. During this time, various warlords governed their territories. The Seki Smiths, swordsmiths active in Seki City, Gifu Prefecture, known for creating sharp and robust katanas, were invited to work for these lords as okakae, or retained artisans. In the subsequent Edo period, Japanese swordsmiths often became exclusive artisans for the daimyo, showcasing their skills for their lords. During the Azuchi Momoyama period, the era governed by Toyotomi Hideyoshi is referred to as the Momoyama period. This was a transitional time from the medieval to the early modern period, moving from the Sengoku period to a peaceful world. It was then that the Momoyama culture, characterized by bold and luxurious styles, blossomed. Grand castles and temples were constructed, adorned with elaborate screen paintings and sculptures. Similarly, Japanese katanas became more ornate, with flamboyant blade patterns and sword body carvings, favored more for their aesthetic value than for combat. Swordsmiths began to gather mainly in Kyoto, Edo, and the castle towns of various lords. Prominent swordsmiths of this era include Umetara Myoju of Yamashiro Province, known as the founder of Shinto, and Horikawa Kunihiro. Katanas made from the Heian period to the Sengoku period were called Koto, and those reflecting the spirit of Momoyama culture onwards were called Shinto. The blade length of katanas also increased to about 28.3 inches to 29.5 inches. With the advent of the Edo period, Japan entered a time of peace. The Tokugawa shogunate, established by Tokugawa Ieyasu, improved national distribution networks, making consistently high-quality iron sand available for kana making, leading to standardized quality in katanas. However, as there were no major battles, practical katanas began to decline. Famous katanas were no longer used in combat, but were passed down as family heirlooms. Although martial arts like swordsmanship were encouraged, by the mid-Edo period, the demand for new katanas dwindled, primarily becoming gifts among feudal lords. As katanas lost their value as weapons, many swordsmiths workshops closed, forcing smiths to shift to making knives and razors. Yet, in the late Edo period, demand for katanas revived. In 1853, the event known as Kurofune Raiko occurred when American naval officer Matthew Perry arrived in Japan with an armed fleet, leading to the end of Japan's isolationist policy. The weakening of the shogunate led to deteriorating public order, and katanas again became prominent as weapons. Swordsmiths of this era rejected the simplified style of new katanas and returned to the old, creating Shin Shinto, known for their robust blades and grand appearance, becoming practical weapons once more. Figures like Suishinshi Masahide, known as the founder of Shin Shinto, and Minamoto Kiyomaro led the sword world during this turbulent time restoring the katana's provenance. The Edo period also had the Kirisute Gomen system, allowing samurai to kill those of lower status who committed unbearable rudeness without punishment, illustrating the era's class hierarchy. However, it was seldom exercised as the samurai had to objectively demonstrate the unbearable rudeness received. Failure to prove justification could result in a death sentence and the dissolution of the samurai's house. It was a risky system. In Edo, Japan, 
The katana was not for indiscriminate violence, but a symbol of Bushido, serving as a means of self-protection and spiritual support. post Bakumatsu, end of Edo period, with the evolution of firearms such as guns and cannons, katanas ceased to be used in actual combat. Following the Meiji Restoration, the decree banning the wearing of swords was issued, leading to the disappearance of the samurai class. Only officials like police and military personnel were allowed to carry swords, leading to the production of command and military swords. However, katanas were not confiscated from townspeople or samurai families. They remained as family heirlooms in their homes. Katanas transitioned into being regarded as art pieces, with strict legal regulations on their possession. This shift was influenced by the post-World War II occupation policies of the United States. The GHQ announced the confiscation of weapons, including katanas, from civilian homes. However, the Japanese government argued that seizing katanas was a plunder of cultural property, leading to an exemption for those with artistic value. One famous katana, Okanehira, escaped this confiscation. After World War II, General Douglas MacArthur requested this sword from the Ikeda family, its owners. However, they famously refused, stating they would only consider it if exchanged for the Statue of Liberty. After the decree banning the wearing of swords, katanas made are referred to as gendaito. Contemporary katanas are characterized by a gentle curve, wider tips, and a sense of solidity. A particularly renowned gendaito smith is Kasan Sarakazu. His descendant, Kasan Saratoshi, continues to work as a holder of an intangible cultural asset. Nowadays, katanas are permitted only as tools for martial arts or for display purposes, not as weapons. Since ancient times, swords in Japan have been recognized for their spiritual significance, often enshrined in shrines as sacred objects. Throughout history, from their introduction to Japan to the present day, swords have held meanings beyond mere weaponry. Today, many shrines across Japan enshrine katanas as sacred objects. As mentioned earlier, the Kusanagi no Tsurugi, a symbol of the emperor's legitimate succession, is enshrined at Asuta Shrine. There are two main ways to view historical katanas in Japan. Visiting museums with sword exhibits or going to shrines. The origin of the katana traces back to mainland China, but it evolved uniquely over time, adapting to changes in the historical context and combat styles. Considered a divine object, a piece of art, and a symbol of the samurai, the katana continues to fascinate people even today. We hope you enjoyed this exploration into the world of Japanese swords. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting content about the history of Japanese swords. Until next time, sayonara.